You know, it's been, uh, gosh, eight, nine years since the first time I went over to uh, Hawaii and talked to Paul Mitchell and John Paul about what was happening and what was going to be happening with this company. Well, we're back again for a visit with John Paul, his lovely wife, uh, Eloise, and we are here in Malibu in California. Behind me is the house that uh, JP is building. Should be done, they say, in maybe three months or so. It's beautiful. We're going to take you inside the house. We're going to talk with uh, John Paul. We're going to talk with Eloise. You'll meet uh, Brooks Parsons. And we're going to take you up to Squaw Creek in the Squaw Valley, the beautiful ski resort in Northern California for our second look at a Marjo Gortner, John Paul Mitchell Systems ski event. They are the uh, sponsors of that celebrity uh, charity event this year. There's a whole lot more to come in this 12 or 15 minutes, so let's get started. John Paul's new home in Malibu is really something to see. And in just a minute, we'll take a brief tour with JP's wife, Eloise, who in addition to holding duties as first lady of John Paul Mitchell Systems, is trying to keep up with her second love, horses. So do you come down here a lot? Yeah, yeah, I try to. We're real busy. Yeah. We travel around the world for Paul Mitchell. <laughs> you, can, you can come down here and look up and see the house. That's yeah, kind of nice, isn't that's it? That's true. So you are now going to become a horsewoman in your spare time? Oh, yeah. Well, I've always, always loved horses passionately, but... Somehow so I just can't picture Eloise as Annie Oakley, and I'm sure Annie Oakley's yeah. bathroom it's never it's looked like this. It's, it's my this is basically your bathroom here, yeah. right? It's the bathroom. This is uh, in the fireplace and the jacuzzi yeah. and uh, the shower. You see the shower over there, Dave? Look at that shower. See, that's pretty neat. That's an incredible huh? design that Randy and I came up with that John Paul implemented for us. I want to ask you about um, the commercial. Everybody talks about the commercial. As a matter of fact, before we do that, maybe we should watch it. Okay, Want to watch it? Sure. Here's the um, the commercial, the new uh, John Paul Mitchell Systems Paul Mitchell Products commercial, starring uh, the lovely and talented <laughs> Eloise DeJoya, produced and directed by Herb Brits. Watch this. Hair, hair that is free flowing, like the sea, living in harmony with light, dancing in its shadows. Fit, vibrant hair. Nourished and cared for by the elements of our earth. This is Paul Mitchell here. Remember, buy the real Paul Mitchell products in salons only. Well, we all to get there. Okay. Get closer. We'll talk to Eloise again later when we take you to Squaw Valley, California. But first, I wanted to sit down with John Paul for just a minute to talk about his favorite subject, John Paul Mitchell Systems. Your company continues to be the there's no other word, the leader in the industry. It seems that whatever you do, other companies decide that must be the thing to do in the industry. Yes, we've been quite fortunate to be the leader in many areas. So have other companies, but we've been very fortunate. How have you kept that going for so long? We've been talking to you about this now right. for six or seven years. Sure. It doesn't seem to change. Okay, Ricky, I'll tell you what it is. Take a couple of horses. Let's take race horses. You have two or three race horses, and they're all just about the same. Let's say they come from a good breed. And Wayne Clark, in fact, gave me this analogy in our industry. You feed the horses certain things, they grow a certain way, and one becomes a little faster than the other. And if one's bred really well and fed the right foods, it automatically has the advantage on the other horse. Well, in our industry, it is the better promotions you give salespeople to work with. Of course, the more they have to work with, it's like feeding a horse. But still, there's a horse that wins the race. There's the horse that is the worst odds in the world but all of a sudden, the horse wins the race. What does it take to win the race at the end, other than the right promotions, the right fuel, and everything else? I think the reason we have been so consistent as you know, leaders for the last 14 years is we do have one thing that's there every single year. We have a spirit and an enthusiasm that is very tough to match. We have that energy, and as long as that energy is there, nothing's going to stop us. When we lose, lose the energy, then you're going to see John Paul Mitchell system start to stagnate and go down. But the energy is there. It hasn't been lost. And it's that extra heart, what comes from the heart, that keeps us in first place as a winner. Well, I said we'd take you to Squaw Valley, and here we are. What a beautiful ski resort this is, and what a location for the Paul Mitchell Distributor Meeting. In a moment, we'll have some fun, and we'll talk to some of the 40 celebrities that were attending the Special Olympics charity event. But first, let's get down to the business. And John Paul Mitchell Systems is still growing and still building. There is no end in sight. Believe it or not, the meeting part of this meeting is what the Paul Mitchell Distributors come for, just as much as the fun. 
At the breaks and at the welcome cocktail party, I spoke with some of them. You come to these events uh, just for fun, or seriously, why do you come? It's very important to uh, see everyone, get a real understanding of the plans for the next six months. It gets me excited to take back to get our staff excited. And this is, this is our business, this is our family. If we're not here, we're not with our family and not learning what needs to be done out in the field. Well, it gets better every single year. We started off very slowly, like every distributor does, but every single year we increase, 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 double, triple every year. We're expecting another great, fabulous year next year. <laughs> How have you managed to be so successful with this product? Quite honestly, we just listen to what JP tells us to do. And we just go out and try to execute it every day, because that's really what it's about. Gary has our smallest area of distribution, Las Vegas, Nevada. Actually, Nevada, but Las Vegas Las is really Vegas is Las Vegas, Vegas is it. And he's one of our largest increase. He's been one of our early distributors from the early 1980s, and it's just growing and growing and growing. Tell me why you keep doing this, why it's so much fun. I have the charisma behind it, being in the beginning, watching it grow, you know, it's, I just don't want to leave it. This is like a family. It's always positive, um, always a new direction, um, always moving forward and staying focused on being a leader and not worrying about what else is going on, just getting out and doing the job with our customers and enjoying it while we do it, that's the key. It's a beautiful American success story in business that can only happen to the best of people, that's how we see it. And we're really fortunate to be a part of it. Uh, with me now is Brooks uh, Parsons, who is the uh, Vice President now of Dream Fulfillment. Office of Dream Fulfillment. Office, which is the, the most fun job at Paul Mitchell, right? Yeah, I mean, you've got to admit, Brooks, this is not like that. I don't know. I, I tell you what, every, you know, people say a lot about that, but this company has such a heart, and everybody in this company thinks the job they do is just the greatest job in the world, so I don't know whether mine's the best or not, but I tell you what, I have a lot of fun doing it. Luke. This is an exciting event always because your distributors are here and uh, everybody is really up, right. a lot of motivated people. Right. Um, you see this company from a real overview position, very similar to what John Paul sees. What do you see happening in the coming 12 months? What's in store for these people? I, I think 94 is going to bring uh, a, 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 a re kindling a uh, take us let's get going now to that next level uh, let's believe let's uh, let's let's get that road map that we've been working on here uh, let's all start driving down it it's obvious that uh, we're trying to take all the excuses out of the way now there, there really are no excuses and uh, so everybody has to believe that all we have to do is see the vision and drive for it growth is everywhere it's uh, uh, we don't need to talk about where it is it's there just how do we go do it and I think our focus is going to be on keep giving the tools and keep giving the encouragement and keep giving the support to all the team around us uh, internally at the distributor levels that we have to believe it's there because it's there there's no question about it it's everywhere in every area so let's dwell positively positively on growth growth and growth put the machines together that get us there and in again at the distributor levels at the salon levels and of course at the manufacturers level let's put the machines together we're gonna go get it let's go get it now let's stop talking about it let's go Robin Deshays is John Paul Mitchell Systems Marketing Director, and I asked her about the company's exciting new product line, Creatives. We have uh, decided to do a line within a line, and we're launching a new line of Paul Mitchell Creatives products. A line within a line? Yes. What does that mean? It means that Paul Mitchell, our very strong trade name, will continue to remain on the label, but the line within a line is Creatives. And it's a subline that started out with our color-infusing shampoos that were launched last April, and is going to be extended with four new products. And you're excited about this. Very excited about it. What about the distributors? What are they saying? They don't know about it oh, yet. Oh, they don't know yet. <laughs> if you think new products are exciting, you've never Get seen a Paul ball. Mitchell broom ball tournament. John Paul, Eloise, Paul Mitchell ball. distributors, and celebrities like Alan Thick, Marley Matlin, and 90210's Ian Zerling gave new meaning to the term ice follies. Are you on J uh, JP's side or somebody else's side? Uh, Which I'm team always, are you on? Well, I'm, I'm always on JP's side because he picks his team uh, according to hair, not according to agility. I'm on the hair team. There's a bunch of bald guys, very skilled, who are not picked. 
because they didn't uh, they didn't pass the hair test. I did the best I could. You, you took three really really bad falls. Yeah, and I'm feeling it now. One of my my lower uh, lower back, but I'm alright. I'm resilient. I'll bounce back. I got to ski tomorrow. I spoke with Eloise. She said you won, but your team cheated. <laughs> I don't think so. Eloise, come here. Eloise, we didn't yeah. cheat. We didn't cheat, honey. Come here, let me bring my wife here. Honey, how did I cheat? This is, we did not cheat, honey, how did we cheat? Honey, it wasn't you, it was us vixens on your team, you know, they Angie were... and Marley. Oh, they Marley. cheated, they cheated. One of the highlights of the meeting was the star-studded dinner and Dan Fogelberg concert hosted by John Paul Mitchell Systems, oh, which featured a charity oh, auction by Marjo Gortner, who managed to sell a year's supply of Paul Mitchell products to Flo Joe and Al Joyner for $1,800. You just got yourself two years' supply of Paul Mitchell products. Yes, that's a great feeling. <laughs> the Paul Mitchell dinner ended with a concert by none other than Dan Fogelberg, which was a real treat for everyone. But you know, I think more than anything, the Paul Mitchell distributors had the most fun in the snow, watching celebrities compete in the Special Olympics charity event. Here's a few of the people who made this a very special and unforgettable day really been a, uh, you know a, it's a beautiful place Squaw Creek is great great food great people and it's for a good cause uh, if I can get through the afternoon without taking my team out of competition I'll feel good oh the best it's so great everybody's having a wonderful time and look at the, our weather ah perfect Boy, I'll tell you, Rick, it's hard to believe, they, but they get better and better every year. This is my 14th year attending a distributor meeting, and we're here in Squaw Creek, uh, Squaw Valley. It's, it's magnificent, 60 degrees out here, and JP is really focused and fine-tuned on the next 10 years, and it's, it's very encouraging for all of us to hear. We're looking forward to a continued uh, uh, trip to heaven. <laughs> First of all, I've never skied on a slope like that, that steep, and I had the instructor right behind me, so it was really awkward, but at the same time, next year I'll be on my own, and I'm sure I'll be, you know, better. Jump up! Did you see how that man, we were exactly neck and neck until the last gate, and then he pulled ahead. That was the most amazing thing. And if it wasn't for that extra block of snow that he ran into, this would have been the winner with another year's supply of palm a few more games. Here she comes. She made it. Pamela Anderson from Bay One. You oh said God. you come this morning. You just didn't think you could do that. Well, I skied for the first. I skied an hour and a half yesterday, and that was the first time in my life. And then today, I skied for an hour. So I can't believe I did that. I'm still shaking. <laughs> I've been involved with Special Olympics in different venues for about 10 years now, so this one fit right in. And I've done a, an event for Marjo about, I guess, about eight years ago, and it was a great experience, very well organized, and everyone um, was very nice. So uh, that kind of dictates it. So, but my, my association with Special Olympics is what brought me here. It was four years ago, four, four and a half years ago, you and I sat down in Vail, Colorado with you and Paul, uh -huh. and uh, we talked about um, what was going to be happening in the future, uh, what you wanted for the company, what Paul wanted for the company. It was the last interview, actually, that Paul did. It was yes. lengthy. Has that pretty much come true at this point in time? We have exceeded what we wanted. We have exceeded it. We have gone above. Our dream was to be the largest uh, professional salon hair care company in do over a hundred million dollars a year in the United States of America, plus some extra business international, and we've gone far beyond that, far beyond our, our largest dreams. But the amazing thing, Rick, is we've just realized that we are now reinventing ourselves all over again, and even though we've been so fortunate to be blessed by many gracious people, distributors, associates, hairstylists supporting us, we right now are just a baby taking off. We are now looking at ourselves as somebody brand new that's going to take off to do what no one's ever dreamt could be done in the professional beauty industry. So we're not a dinosaur now. We've been very fortunate. We're not a dinosaur. We consider ourselves still a baby that's now regrouping to be able to do five, ten times what we're doing right now, and that's one incredible goal. But we're going to do it, and our distributors are behind us 1,000%.
that's going to about wrap things up for this edition of Profiles. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed uh, having a look at some of the uh, most exciting and certainly the most interesting companies in the beauty industry. I'd especially like to thank the people at American Salon Magazine for showing us such a good time here in Manhattan. And we hope you've enjoyed watching Profiles. And stay tuned, because the show will repeat again in just a few minutes. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.